Mamma mia, it's a pizza. It's a pizza pie. Yeah. So this guy slides off. Ow! This is ridiculous. It's already burning the lid. I can't see anything. It's too much. Holy. Oh, that was an ordeal. All right, let's close the lid. Welcome back. We're at the cabin in the woods again, and today we are going to build a rock pizza oven or a bread oven or I don't know, everybody want to call it. Maybe it's a maybe it's a chicken roasting oven. So Don, how far are we digging? We dig we digging to China? Just about there. We're well, not to China, but we don't want to get to China. A China. Good solid base. So we've taken this first layer of topsoil off. I guess it's the top layer. It's the topsoil. So we've got down about eight inches down to the clay base. Uh, you don't want to build on top soil because uh, it tends to squish down and shift. Clay is very stable. So we've digging down to the clay uh, and that'll be our base. So we're just going to level that uh, clay bottom out and uh, we can start laying our first row of uh, our first layer of rocks. While building the base of the pizza oven, we ended up using larger stones that we had on site. And my theory is, is that the larger the stone, the harder it is to push into the ground. Meaning the bottom will be heavier than the top. The more surface area, the less likelihood it's going to push itself into the ground. We used four large stones on the corners of the pizza oven in order to stabilize it the best we could with what we had. When setting the base, we realized soon enough that the base needed to be flat in order to accommodate wood at further. So I ended up finding a, it was a two foot by two foot patio slab and it made the perfect base for the middle of the pizza oven. It looks like there's words on it and, it, and it's got little holes. It's kind of neat. I don't know, I'll put that one aside. When mixing up mortar, the ideal consistency is that of peanut butter almost self-supporting. So if you take it and put it into a clump, it should stay like a clump. It's mixed too thin, it'll squish itself completely out of what you're setting, the material setting. So the heavier the material, the thicker your mortar should be to support it. If you mix your mortar too thin, and then you place your stone or brick, what happens is the mortar actually squishes itself out and you don't have enough mortar to bond one side of the stone to the other side of the stone. So it's important to have the right consistency in the mortar. We're always looking for the perfect stone. It's always in the bottom. So Don, what do you call that fancy pointing tool you're using? Uh, fingers. <laughs> He's using his fingers to point. So the idea behind this rubble foundation, basically what we're building, we put the mortar in loose, we stack the stone as best we can. And when we take the mortar, when it's gets a little more solid, what we do is we actually smooth it out. You can use a pointing tool or in Don's case, you can use your fingers. I recommend wearing gloves and probably thick rubber gloves because uh, the, the mortar does have some lime in it and some caustic stuff. I guess that's the caustic stuff is the lime. You don't want to get it on your fingers because it peels out your skin off. So yeah. So what Don's doing is basically smoothing out, smoothing out, making it look pretty. It should be a little drier. So we're just gonna probably stack another couple of rows on it. We can only go a certain height today because if you go too high, um, it's just gonna fall over. So we wanna go a couple more rows, get it to our, our basically platform height uh, and then let it set overnight and um, carry on building it higher. See when mixing concrete, it's best to hold the camera. Stand away from the dust and hold the camera. That's the best way to mix concrete.
This is the technical way of pointing. Well, it's been about a week since I, since I built this base. Uh, so I've been looking for a rock, a large rock, four by three. I couldn't really find one. Then I realized to myself, if I did find one, I wouldn't probably be able to lift it. What we're gonna do instead is I'm gonna build a rock. So out of concrete, I'm gonna form it up with some two by sixes all around, uh, add some rebar, pour some concrete, and that'll be our slab for our uh, the next tier of the rock oven. So we need to make a platform on top of it in order for the, uh, the actual pizza oven, the business end of this thing to actually sit. Had I found a rock, I probably would have used it. I couldn't find a rock. So uh, now we're here. We're gonna make a rock. I'm gonna talk about a cool tool. This is, uh, I've had this set hanging on my tool belt for quite some time. It's uh, called a big lug. And what it is, is basically a hook that dangles from your, uh, your, work, your, your work belt. And what it does is it allows you to hang your drill. Like this, it's not a holster, it's just a hook. It's an ingenious hook, it's patented. It's a company called Big Lug. It's amazing. It's, a, if, my local hardware store was, you know, was to carry these again, I'd buy, just have spare. I had two, I've got one. It's a, uh, it's invaluable tool to help you do your job because your drill is always at its ready. It's just always sitting there, it just dangles. It goes where you go. So when you try to put screws in, it's always behind you. It's a great little tool. Whenever you're building with natural materials such as stone, you can never really get it level. So the plan here is to basically make a concrete form. That's why I've got the two by six all the way around. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make basically a basket to hold all the concrete. Now, when you're making a basket up to the rock, it's, it's not gonna be easy. So I'm gonna use little pieces, kind of like this and basically attach them all to the underside of this structure in order to hold the concrete. Concrete's like making a giant cake. All our cake batter is gonna fall out if we don't uh, make sure we make a proper pan. So we're gonna make a proper pan. Hopefully our concrete doesn't all fall out. Hopefully they just collapse. Hopefully I have enough concrete. There's lots of, there's lots of ifs. Just make a pan, pour concrete, bada bing bada boom. I can taste the pizza already. I added some tar paper on the base to fill in all the little holes because we don't want our cake batter running out of our cake pan. That'll bridge the gaps and hopefully the concrete doesn't ooze its way through. I've also added some rebar from good measure. I had some laying around, so I might as well throw that in. And now we make the cake. So I'm told you're supposed to tie your rebar together. I'm not sure why. I'm sure, can somebody tell me why you tie your rebar together? As long as it's in the concrete, shouldn't it just be good? Anyways, I don't have the right tie wire, but this is, this is tie wire for construction with furring channel and stuff like that on drywall. So I have a bunch of that laying around. So what I'm gonna do is wire these guys all together. I'm not sure why, but I'm gonna do it. Of course, the rain would come right at the end. So, that's it for Mr. Camera. Let's see if I can get this thing trialed out before I get wrecked. I haven't mentioned the good part about having a cabin yet. Place you can go when it rains. There's a real, real rain delay. Some styrofoam on the uh, on the pour so it doesn't get completely destroyed. Hopefully this rain doesn't last very long. It's got a setup anyway, so we're gonna hang out at the cabin. Nice and dry, cozy. Nothing like the sound of rain hitting a tin roof. Dog days. Dog days are raining. You buddy? Hey? Yeah. So I figured now is as good a time as any to talk about fire brick. So I ended up acquiring these from an old stove, wood stove, that somebody was uh, basically trading up. So this was, uh, this was a perfectly good fire brick. I'm gonna line the bottom above the concrete with fire brick in order to protect it from the intense heat of the actual fire that's gonna sit on the bottom. So this is, this is the fire brick. Um, the dome, 
it's going to be made out of just stone. I've done some research. If you want to spend some money on fire brick, yeah, it's going to work better. It's going to hold the heat. It's going to refract the heat. But if you don't, at the very minimum, do the base. That's what we're going to do. So I got a, a box of fire brick. We're going to do the base. And we'll see how the rest of it lasts. The rain has slowed down a little bit. So I can uh, get back out here. Glad my uh, rain catchment system's all set up. You guys should check that out if you didn't. It works really, really, really well. This allows me to actually have water in order to mix my concrete, in order to build more things. So it's a fundamental aspect of modern living. I just got to screed it off, meaning taking a board and sliding it back and forth along it to, to flatten it out and then let it set up. And then I'm going to uh, trial it out with a, well, my pool float. Ideally, you would use a magnesium float. I don't own one of those, but that's what you're supposed to use. Isn't that satisfying, removing the forms? It's like, it's like baking a cake and then out of the oven and you flip it upside down and it's all properly shaped to the pan. That's what concrete is to me. It's, it's like baking a cake. So we got our cake, nice rectangle cake, concrete. I think it turned out pretty good considering the rain and the lack of concrete. I might have been a little short. Debating on, on using stone for the, the upper half and, and creating an arch and the whole dome system that has to be involved with making a pizza oven. And then I thought to myself, do I have something that's similar dimensions? Do I have a lot of them? And I thought, well, I have a lot of rocks. Is it the ideal material to use? No. And then I think, do I have anything else? And then I think, wait a second, wait a second. I think I know where there's a pile of bricks. They're used bricks, they're clay bricks. It checks off the box. I gotta go see if I have enough brick because I might make the inside of it bricks because it's probably, they're all the same size. Should be easier to make arches with bricks. Have I ever built a pizza oven before? No. Do I know what a pizza oven looks like? Yeah, I've got a pretty good idea. Do I know where to start? No. So, let's, let's start by cleaning off some bricks, laying some stuff out and see what it looks like because you gotta start somewhere, so I gotta clean some bricks off and start laying out what I think the pizza oven should look like. How big is a medium pizza? Ah. 13 inches? 13 inches of medium pizza? I don't know. I just Googled it. Google knows everything. So anyways, a uh, medium pizza is 12 inches. Got eight slices. This opening I have here is 13 inches. So I should be able to squeak by. It doesn't look very big because this thing's monster. So I'm going to make it three bricks wide because that's what I have. And uh, you know what? If uh, just make more pizza. You don't need to have a big, large opening. You want to have a small opening to hold your heat in. So I'm sure any good bricklayer could probably lay this without a form, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some plywood bed. Oh, maybe I'll make some plywood bend. Maybe some relief cuts in that will make it, make it bend a little better. That's not gonna work. So if you're gonna fail, fail quickly. So I've been uh, soaking this guy, soaking this guy in the pond, and then, you know what? It made it stiffer. I, I can even I can bend this one even less, which is kind of weird. So I might do a hybrid of this steel pipe. That thing's pipe. This steel pipe for the door opening. Don showed up, which is great because he can clean bricks. Say hi, Don. Hello. <laughs> After realizing there was no way I was going to be able to bend 3 8 plywood into an arch that tight, I ended up using a piece of pine and cutting it into a arch shape and then tacking on little bits of two by three in order to widen it in order to, for the brick to have something to support itself to. <laughs> Bricklaying 101. That's what we're learning anyways. This is the first time Dawn or I have ever attempted to do brick. So 
we got the front. I don't know if we could have done any better. Well, I probably there's always room for improvement, but it looks like it's it looks like it's an opening. It looks like we can get a pizza in there. Don's just working on the back wall. Let's have a look. Figure we got we we cleaned off like a billion bricks, and then we decided we're gonna do the whole thing out of rock except the back wall and the front door. Don's just putting together the back wall here. Bricklaying 101. We've never laid bricks before. Might as well start now. This is a perfect place to lay bricks. When we excavated for the pond we have a big pile of rocks so now we're looking for some keystone don's already looking he ran down here was so excited to get the keystone so hopefully he's oh look he's got a rock got a rock done here's one keystone look at that it's beautiful should we wash it look at look at that's why i carry the camera carry the camera so you don't have to carry the rock so yeah we're looking we're looking for some you can see all the rock we have to choose from Don's an expert on this. Remember when you, you saw him build the root cellar and he was, look at, look at them all. We should have brought the wheelbarrow. Um, how about I put the camera down and give Don a hand because I feel silly just letting him move rocks. Those are the ones we fished out of the thing with all four corners. It's gonna allow us to start somewhere. So when you're working with mortar, you always want to have a pair of gloves. Don's got some rubber gloves on. I've got these, uh, these leather gloves and uh, the best kind of gloves are free ones and my buddy my buddy mark left these left these behind he didn't think i was going to be using them for concrete so when he's watching this surprise i'm using your gloves ever done research after you purchase something do you think hey let's let's go do some research kind of like buyer's remorse i was doing some research on brick oven or rock oven and what they said if you're going to use rock was to fire the rock beforehand in sort of a fire pit and the ones that don't explode use for your rock oven we didn't do that we just kind of had a bunch of rock and we started making a brick oven we're gonna find out if our pizza oven is gonna explode hopefully it doesn't explode i guess i'll learn right learn a lesson that i have exploding pizza or so don got an early start I, I i think he slept in the woods last night so he was here before me and he actually started mixing and going he's a uh, he's highly motivated sleep in the woods last night oh uh, no no i slept uh, slept in my own bed but the the plan now is to uh, basically work from both sides and work our way up to the middle and uh, then enclose the chimney this is our chimney here it's an old uh, it's from our uh, evaporator build if you don't if you can check that out of the wooded beersmith's channel we did a uh, maple syrup evaporator and this is this is the chimney for it so we'll have to get another chimney or actually you know what let's build the proper evaporator this year let's add that to the list okay so we're gonna stack some stone we're gonna speed that process up through the magic of film, you're gonna see progress. And any luck, we'll be eating. Eating soon. Pizza, mmm, pizza. When I started the day, I thought, you know what, I'm not gonna have enough mortar. So I told Don, I said, on his way in, can you pick up some more mortar? And sure enough, we had just enough mortar. We didn't even touch the stuff he brought. That's unusual. Usually, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. But uh, now we got three extra bags. But uh, have a look at this. This is this is what's left. Nothing. That's impressive. We didn't actually overmix anything. So now, all we have to do is wait for this to dry up, and then we brush out the joints. Does anybody else? feel like filling this thing with baking soda and Adam's vinegar because I think we just built a volcano then you could light it on fire and cook a pizza it would be like a volcano it, like a true volcano it's a volcano oven it's not a pizza oven volcano oven yeah doesn't it look angelic there with backlit it's pretty I like it so finishing up the detail work of the pizza oven we've loosely placed all of the bricks in place and i don't know if you can see closely but uh so the, the mortar is in between the rocks in order to get a nice smooth finish you have to leave it a little while it's been a couple of hours relative humidity is is pretty high so the stuff hasn't been drying that well and what i do is i come back with a uh, a brush in order to leave a nice smooth finish now this is a this isn't hard to do and a lot of people overlook it they think when they when they do it they're like ah oh, geez i'm not very good at this well in reality people wait that do it they wait until it's a little bit dry and then they tool it out 
that's that's often overlooked when when doing any sort of uh, concrete work, mortar work, pointing, brickwork. Hello. Hello. Is anybody home? So the next day, we're here. Everything's dry. Doesn't this look like the chosen rock? It's got like a little shrine. It's Hopefully the rocks are placed in a fashion that they're self-supporting. They've wedged in there. The mortar's dried up. Take the forms off. Hopefully it doesn't clap. I got some other stuff to do. I got to put a mantle here and uh, take this form out. I guess I could burn the wood out. Guess we'll see what happens. It's not like it's collapsing, but I think it should firm up a little bit. Now that I've got some air flow into there and I got that styrofoam out, I think it'll give it some time to, to stiffen up. I don't wanna, yeah, I don't wanna wreck what I've done. So I'm gonna give that a day, but you guys could probably get to watch it right now. Since I'm waiting for this thing to dry anyways, I might as well make it look pretty. So I went up to the mill and grabbed a, uh, an off cut from a cedar because we were making the hobbit house if you haven't seen the hobbit house you should go check it out it's pretty cool anyways this was a cut from just the basically the face of a log it was just laying around so what i was thinking just like that cover up the rough edge of the log i'm going to secure the front with a couple of uh tapcon screws so these are designed to go into concrete so you drill them you do a pilot hole the concrete bit Drill into the concrete, and you just screw it in like you would normal screw. These are expensive. So if you ever see them around and they're cheap, pick them up. You never know when you need to screw some concrete. I had to be patient on this one. I, I really wanted to take the support structure down the other day, but I've waited a couple days. The mortar has set up considerably. Like you can see this, this is harder to break apart like you, you can't really break it apart well you can but it's it's not like just sand sitting in place so i hope this doesn't collapse this is the inside of the pizza oven it's exciting so this stuff here is uh is what was holding it up during uh during the build you can see a little bit of mortar sticking out um you can see the screws right i attached it to the insulation so i'm going to take this out um it is an arch. It's it's most likely self-supporting. It's just a question of uh, has it dried enough and uh, what it looks like after you take the support out. That's hard to come out. It's like a brick oven or something. I'm just chipping off some of the loose border that uh, spilled out over the edge because I've got to make another door. I love making doors. Next stage of the game, generally I think, is uh, it's called refractory cement, and what it's done is it usually pars the inside of the, I guess the the oven, the pizza oven, and that allows the it protects the mortar that's there, protects the the brick. It's a refractory cement, and it reflects heat back down to the pizza. I'm not sure we're gonna have that issue with this guy, so uh, I'm gonna skip that step. But Again, this is not a how-to, this is what I'm doing. So if you're building a pizza oven and you want it to last a thousand years, probably use the refractory cement. Parge the inside of it. I might visit that at a later date. On this one, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to line the bottom fire brick. This allows a place for the pizza, well, the pizza surface. Also, it allows the heat, the intense heat from the fire that's lit inside the pizza oven to be lifted off the concrete. Lighting a fire on concrete is not a great idea. So this is specially designed fire brick from an old stove repurposed to be the floor of this pizza oven. Tales from the pizza oven. This is what it looks like inside the pizza oven. This is kind of cool. I can see why people would make a house out of rock and mortar. So I've got the fire brick all laid out. Um, it looks like it fits pretty good. So now, I guess what, what's, what's next is, uh, well, we need a door. 
and um, light her up. Let's just like I think I think if we light a little fire, it'll dry it out a little bit more. It feels very moist in here, but it is it is quite warm outside, and this uh, this thing has a lot of mass. So I think if we light it up, it'll it'll uh, it'll make it it'll dry it out, or it'll explode. Now that we got the door template figured out, I'm going to take this, transfer it to a uh, thicker piece of wood, and I'm going to cut it out. And the reason why is to keep the heat in. The door, once you light your fire, you put the door on it, keeps the heat in, makes it look pretty, keeps the critters out. There's lots of reason for the door. And we haven't had enough chainsaw on this build. So I'm going to add a little chainsaw, make a door, button this guy up. It's a door! The crowning touch, this is the cap off of an old oil-fired furnace. It was on the roof of somebody's house and they were throwing it out and I said, that thing is pretty. It's stainless steel. You don't find them stainless steel very often. So when you do, you hang on to them. Even if you don't have an immediate use for them, I hang on to chimney caps because they're expensive and you never know when you're gonna need a chimney cap. I was told to make it to 500 degrees in order to properly cook a pizza. How much wood is that? That's probably enough. I built the paddle for the pizza oven out of some butternut I had laying around. It was nice and dry. I used the approximate measurements of the front of the door being about 13 inches. So I made the paddle 12 inches and about four feet long. I ended up sanding it down and using a natural oil. It's called nature oil and it's designed for butcher blocks, cutting boards, salad bowls, wood handles, toys. It basically prevents drying, um, like drying out of the wood. It coats it, it protects it, it makes it somewhat uh, waterproof. So yeah, it's a company called uh, Circa 1850 and they make butcher block preservative and uh, it's the same thing that I would use on a countertop or a butcher block. Did you know that you can go to your local favorite pizza place and generally ask nicely for some dough and some toppings? I'm sure they'll gladly sell you dough and pepperoni and cheese and, and whatever other toppings you want. I made a basically a pepperoni pizza. I used pepperoni. I had some mozzarella cheese. I used the dough and uh, the, the special sauce. Uh, this pizza is just dynamite. It's, it's delicious. Uh... Mamma mia, it's a pizza. It's a pizza pie. Yeah. Hopefully this guy slides off. My eyes. Terrible. <laughs> I gotta get those pepperonis off there. It's gonna vaporize them. Ow! This is ridiculous. It's already burning the lid. I can't see anything. Oh, I think we need... We... Too much. Oh, oh, that was an ordeal. All right, let's close the lid. This is why you should always leave the cooking to the professional. How long should we leave that in there for? Set the timer. Ten minutes. All right. I'm gonna check that in about five. Re Repositioning my pepperoni. That's been in there for like a friggin' minute. Those are just, those are a little bit, little bit more than al dente. Let's just turn this thing. Oh, there we go. There we go. I'll give that another 30 seconds. Like that's insane. That's gotta be, I don't know. That's pretty hot. Pepperoni is still cooking. I'm gonna give it a couple, a couple more minutes. Gotta, it's like, it's like it's been in there for four minutes. Like you almost, you almost like shoot this real time. Like it's insane.
I think that's uh, that's a good pizza pie. Tell it's a little burnt on the one side, but uh, it looks looks look, look at the underside. It looks pretty good. I'd say that's a success with the pizza. It's uh, it's well done. It took uh, actual real time four minutes to cook the pizza from not cooked to almost burnt. There's probably a learning curve. I am not a chef. I am a builder. So we're just cooking some fish just because we got the coal bed all set up. So the oven's all set up, prepped. So you can just cook one thing after the other, after the other, after the other. And uh, yeah, so this this is this is some delicious pizza. It was well worth the effort. That's so it's delicious. Yeah, nice crispy crust. Mmm. Yeah. That's my first time ever cooking a pizza in the uh, in a rock oven. It might be actually be my first time cooking pizza ever. But uh, that's good. Well, I'm gonna finish my pizza. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me build this pizza oven. I know I enjoyed making it. Join me on the next one.